There's a lot of reasons you might have heard of actress Brie Larson. She won an Academy Award for her role in Room, and she played the titular character in Captain Marvel. But before this, she was a lesser-known actress who seems to have found fame overnight. Just where did Brie Larson come from, and why do some people find her so controversial? We'll talk about her life before she took on the role of Captain Marvel, and how that part may have changed the trajectory of her entire career. Like many superheroes, Brie Larson herself has an origin story involving a troubled family. She grew up feeling close to her mother, who taught her children at home instead of sending them to traditional school. While some might find this isolating, Brie claims it was an overall positive experience. Not being forced to conform to school standards meant she was free to explore her own interests and experience different things. She definitely didn't have a cookie-cutter childhood, and that's extremely apparent when you consider the adult she would someday become. When Brie was seven years old, her parents split up, an event which she found extremely traumatic. Brie recalls listening to her mother crying herself asleep at night, not knowing how she was going to make it through the next day. As a child, Brie struggled to understand what could have convinced her father to abandon his family. She was desperate to find some kind of justification for his actions, but found there were none she could see. As an adult, Brie believes her father never really wanted to be a parent, and she was forced to make her peace with that. Her mother moved Brie and her sister into a tiny one-bedroom apartment, and to say things were tight was an understatement. Brie has many happy memories of this time and claims it brought her and her family closer together, and it prepared her for her own lean times before she hit it big in Hollywood. Maybe this struggle is what helped Brie become an honest actress. Brie had been interested in acting since she was a child, and her mother encouraged her to pursue her dreams. However, acting jobs aren't easy to come by, which Brie discovered the hard way. Despite going to countless auditions, she went through long periods of time with zero callbacks. Although she kept going, Brie admitted she frequently thought about quitting acting for good. She says directors never knew quite what to do with her and couldn't see her fitting into any stereotypical roles. She lost out on parts in popular movies like 13 and Juno and was forced to take on other work to get by. Brie Larson is a more multi-talented person than most people realize. The girl can sing. She signed a recording deal, put out an album, and went on tour but failed to attract many fans. Brie lamented that her label wanted her to fit into a mold she just couldn't see herself in. To get some of her creativity out, she also wrote her own zine. She created an art and literature magazine called Bunnies and Traps, to which she was a regular contributor. And if all of that wasn't enough, she even DJed in a club just to keep the bills paid. Did anyone else know Brie Larson was so cool? But that doesn't mean Brie didn't eventually get work. She's been in such huge films like Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, 21 Jump Street, Trainwreck, Don John, and Kong Skull Island, just to name a few. But this career is not as glamorous as Hollywood makes it look sometimes. As recently as 2015, money was still a huge concern to Brie, who frequently considered leaving acting for a more stable career. She's the first to admit that she has a hard time promoting herself and describes herself as an introvert. Networking is a major part of being an actor, so this was a problem for Brie for sure. To say she didn't exactly see herself as a superhero is an understatement. When Room came out in 2015, Brie finally felt secure her acting career and her ability to keep her bills paid. I mean, the girl won an Oscar for the film. This success gave her the boost she needed to take her career to the next level. At this point, the Marvel Cinematic Universe is practically an institution. It's been credited with making and reviving the careers of those who star in its movies, and being a superhero is a role pretty much everyone wants. Well, except for Brie Larson. If you haven't had the opportunity to see Captain Marvel yet, you really should. But if you haven't, don't worry. We won't spoil anything. Brie Larson plays the role of Carol Danvers, a woman who was determined to become a pilot during a time when women weren't allowed the same opportunities as men. Some heroes struggle to become strong and overcome their weaknesses before saving the day, but Carol learns that she always had that kind of strength. This was the message which resonated with Brie Larson and made her decide to say yes to becoming Captain Marvel. She wanted to be a real-life hero and an example to women everywhere. Brie was so nervous about the role and about accidentally revealing spoilers that she didn't admit she had landed the part for an entire year. How did Brie keep that secret for so long? Captain Marvel was a historic entry into the MCU library, so it's no surprise Marvel Studios knew they had to find the perfect actor. The movie was first announced in 2014, and Brie Larson would
wasn't officially announced as the lead until two years later. Of course, she had known much earlier, but she wasn't telling, remember? According to Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige, the bar was set tremendously high when it came to casting, but there was one specific thing he looked for. Not only is Captain Marvel an amazing female superhero, but she's also one with immense powers. She's the most powerful addition to the MCU cast, and this needed to be balanced with a relatable human aspect. Kevin Feige claims it wasn't just about finding the toughest person for the role, but rather someone who could bring vulnerability and relatability to the character. Otherwise, you just have a mighty hero who can save the day that audiences just don't find compelling. Marvel clearly knows that audiences enjoy relatable, although often flawed heroes, and that's been the secret to their success for years. Kevin Feige says Brie is someone, quote, you're going to want to go on this journey with, end quote. And it seems she's poised to become the next big MCU hero. So how did Brie overcome this very large list of concerns for the character? To say she took the part seriously is an understatement, and she even amped up her workout routine in major ways. Brie began incorporating boxing and martial arts into her workouts. Despite Marvel Studios offering to use movie magic on her fight scenes, Brie was determined to do them on her own. Although she admits to being black and blue by the time filming wrapped up, she says it was all worth it. Seriously, Brie Larson is such a badass. But even before the movie hit theaters, there was trouble. All of a sudden, headlines were claiming things like, Brie Larson hates men, or saying people were calling for boycotts of Captain Marvel. What happened? Well, let's consider the fact that Captain Marvel was a monumental movie for Marvel Studios. So when Captain Marvel was announced as the first solo female superhero movie in the MCU, it was a big deal. There were people waiting to tear down Brie Larson and Captain Marvel the second the movie was announced. Online review website Rotten Tomatoes even had to change their policy after a flood of negative reviews cascaded in for Captain Marvel. The issue was, the site was hit with tons of negative reviews before the movie was even out. Why so many haters just because the movie starred a woman? And then there's the famous and often misquoted line from Brie Larson herself, which was used as a rallying cry against her. While talking about the movie A Wrinkle in Time, she did say, quote, I don't care what a white man has to say. Sure, if you take it out of context, that sounds pretty bad. But with context, Brie was talking about the very real fact that the vast majority of movie reviewers are white men. It's something she's been vocal about for years before she hit it big. She's even challenged film festivals like Sundance to have a mere 20% of their reviewers be women and or people of color so that true diversity can be reached in the reviews. Brie also said, quote, I want to hear what a woman of color or a biracial woman has to say about the film. Like all good heroes, Brie was using her power as a platform to speak up to those who often go unheard. Still, there was no doubt many people had completely missed the message Brie was trying to send. With the deluge of bad reviews and social media outrage, it was hard to tell how much it would impact the movie at the box office. But thankfully, Captain Marvel came out ahead. Sorry not sorry, haters! The movie grossed over a billion dollars and received positive reviews, including those about Brie's performance. But don't think Brie is done changing the movie industry just yet. She's just getting started. She hopes to see more women and people of color in front of and behind the camera, and she also wants to hear their opinions on media. Brie claims that one day she looked up and realized the press she interacts with were overwhelmingly white and male. And although her A Wrinkle in Time speech caused an unnecessary backlash, she believes it brought attention to an important issue that's nowhere near being done talked about. And as for Brie Larson's career moving forward, that's doing just fine too. Of course, we all know Captain Marvel shows up to help out the rest of the remaining heroes in Avengers Endgame, but what about another solo movie? That one is more up in the air, and Marvel Studios is notoriously tight-lipped about its upcoming films. But based on statements from Brie Larson and Marvel Studios head Kevin Feige, we wouldn't be surprised to see Captain Marvel 2. After all, the first movie did make over a billion dollars, and we all know Disney loves making money. Plus, most Marvel stars sign on for up to seven movie deals in their contracts, so it's unlikely there won't be more Captain Marvel in the future. But if you can't wait for more Brie Larson, you should know she's been hired for Apple's next big-budget streaming series. It's an adaptation of former CIA agent Amaryllis Fox's memoir, Life Undercover, Coming of Age in the CIA. This is her first TV-slash-streaming role since she appeared in Community years ago, and we can't wait to see it. Thank <laughs> you.
What do you think is next for Brie Larson and the Marvel Cinematic Universe? Make sure you share your thoughts with us in the comments section and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at The Taco. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again next time.